The launch is less than 24 hours away. NASA can cancel the mission at any time if the engineers think it is too dangerous. The temperature the next day is predicted to be more than 10 below freezing. A shuttle has never launched in temperatures so low before. A decision to fly or not has to be made. With just hours to go, Roger Beaujolais is part of a desperate attempt to try and stop the launch. NASA is running out of time. Tomorrow they need to launch by 12.38 p.m. at the latest in order to reach the correct orbit. Challenger is under scrutiny because it has Krista McAuliffe, the teacher of space, on board. Everyone knows NASA wasted a perfectly good launch opportunity because they couldn't remove a jammed handle. With each delay, their public image takes a beating. Now the weather is closing in. Record low temperatures are forecast. At 1 p.m. Standard Time on January 27th, NASA calls Morton Firecall. The call goes through to Beaujolais colleague, Arnie Thompson. NASA wants to know if Morton Firecall has any concerns about launching in the cold. Yeah, they called me the morning before. They predicted temperatures of 18 degrees the next morning at flight time. And that's when it really hit the fan big time. Uh, we rushed into a meeting and four or five of us decided that we were going to make an attempt to stop the launch. The fact of the matter is, O-rings don't work with a dam at freezing temperatures. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. All you have to have is a, a modicum of common sense. Beaujolais and Thompson alert the management at Morton Fire Call of the dangers posed by launching at such a cold temperature. By early afternoon, their bosses are convinced. They get on the phone with NASA to voice their concerns. Morton Fire Call recommends against launching. But NASA is reluctant to abort again unless there is hard evidence. They need proof and want to scrutinize Morton Thiokol's O-ring data before calling it off. A conference call between Morton Thiokol and NASA is planned for 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We ran literally to our offices and basically rummaged through reports and file cabinets. Just grab the current data and go. We had 45 lousy minutes to prepare for the most important technical meeting of our careers. Wrap it up. Let's go. It was now quitting time. Everybody left. We were on our own. Never before in history of spaceflight had there been a company stand up and try to stop a launch of anything. I'm talking about unmanned as well as manned. Nobody, no company has ever done that. This is the moment Beaujolais has been waiting for. Finally, after a year of memos and calls, he has a chance to be heard. As they gather in the meeting room, the Morton Thiokol team are confident they will be able to stop the launch. Yes. They know NASA would not go against a contractor's recommendation. By 8.45 p.m., the call from NASA is connected. Kennedy Space Center is responsible for all launches. Larry Malloy is NASA's manager of the Solid Rocket Booster Project. The Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama is responsible for all rocket and engine systems. Leading the team is Deputy Director of Science and Engineering, George Hardy. The management team in Morton Firecall 
is Senior Vice President Gerald Mason. Joe Kilminster, Vice President of the Space Booster Program. And Robert Lund, Morton Thiokol's Vice President of Engineering. By the time the teleconference starts, launch is just 13 hours away. The success of this mission and the lives of the seven astronauts hang on one simple question. How will the O-rings react to the cold temperatures predicted for launch the next morning? At low temperatures, the O-rings are not so elastic. They won't seal properly. It'll be like uh, putting a, a, a brick into a crack versus a sponge. The grease, too, will be affected. It will be thicker and not as slick. We will have a higher O-ring actuation time, and if that happens, we will approach the threshold of secondary sealed pressurization capability. So we have a situation where neither the primary seal nor the secondary seal will function. After half an hour, the presentation is finished, and spirits among the engineers at Morton Thiokol are high. I'm a little confused by your presentation, Thiokol. You're telling me that we can't launch under 53 degrees, yet your own data suggests that you had blow-by on the O-rings when we launched at 75 degrees. The blow-by was definitely worse at the lower temperature. <sighs> then Malloy asked for Morton Thiokol's launch recommendation. Their decision comes down to Joe Kilminster. I have maximum of a 10% confidence that he's going to stand by what we went into the meeting with, and that was everybody was totally supportive of not launching. And much to my surprise, Kilminster answers and says, So I guess our conclusions are that we should not fly outside of our database, which is 53 degrees. And metaphorically inside of my body, I went, Yes! And I was absolutely on top of the world. That lasted for about 10 seconds. The engineers at Morton Thiokol are confident NASA will stop the Challenger launch. They now wait for the official response. For God's sake, Morton Thiokol, when do you want me to launch? Next April? You guys are generating new launch criteria here. Joe, we have been flying for four years with a known condition in these joints considered and accepted by Thiokol, accepted by me and all levels of NASA management. Think about this. Think about your data. Now, to the layperson, that might not mean much, but to us inside, in the program, fully knowledgeable what's going on, those are metaphorical buzzwords for you screwing up my launch schedule. Only NASA can postpone a launch. All Morton Thiokol can do is make a recommendation. Now, Larry Malloy at Kennedy asked George Hardy at Marshall for his opinion. When George speaks, everybody listens because George is one of the most highly recognized engineer managers on the program. Thiokol, I am appalled. But I won't go against the contractor. In that case, I can't recommend launch. It's the second no vote, because he would not overrule the contractor. But it's also something else. When he said he was appalled, that was a killer absolute killer with their next multi-million dollar contract still under negotiation with nasa the morton thiokol managers are under intense pressure at this point senior vice president gerald mason intervenes jill ask him if we can take a five-minute caucus offline larry could we take five minutes We have to make a management decision. Let's look over the data again and consider Larry Malloy's points. Now, if we launch at the predicted temperatures, we are out of our experience base. Even if we take 40 degrees 
as the temperature floor, we are still way out of our database. In launching at these low temperatures, we are moving away from goodness. We're covering the same ground again. We're just spinning our wheels. To the engineer's dismay, the managers ignore them and hold a private conversation. The five minutes soon stretches into half an hour. It's clear the managers are changing their minds. Thompson makes a last ditch effort to stop the launch. And during this so-called private meeting, while we're offline, uh, I could hear and see the way it was going. And I did something I probably would never do again even. I picked up all my charts and went up to the middle of the table because there was a vacant chair there. And I went through the whole thing, or, you know, as much as I felt I had time. And the resiliency data and some of the other things, um, they're associated with it. And my worried about flying even at room temperature. Finally, I looked up at Jerry's face and that was pretty grim. So I just went back to my desk resolved that, you know, it's going to fly and nothing I could do about it. I am so angry and so mad and so frustrated that I slammed the photographs down and I'm screaming at them because I saw what they did to Arnie to look at the photographs and not avoid what they're telling us. It's very simple, guys. The lower the temperature, the more hot gas gets past the joint, as you see in this photograph of the January 1985 flight. I got the same identical treatment as Arnie got. And so I angrily picked up the photographs and returned to my position at the table. And I basically put my head down on my arms and I didn't, I just, I was, I was, I was so close to losing it. Let's take a vote. Do we recommend a launch? Joe? Every stinking piece of data we had, 14 charts, one of which was the title page, pointed to a reason not to launch. You can't launch with this data. It's impossible. I think it's all right. The vice president of engineering is on the fence, and now he's being pressured to change his mind. Bob, you have to take off your engineering hat and put on your management hat. Kennedy? Marshall? Yeah. I hear you, Joe. Marshall here. Our position is that although temperature effects are a concern, the data predicting blow-by are inconclusive. Now, are there any disagreements or any other comments concerning the Thiokol recommendation? The pressure is intense. No one raises any objections, not even Beaujolais. At NASA, the silence means go for launch. Well, when you're in a meeting like that, and the question is posed whether anybody disagrees with the decision to launch and nobody disagrees, then that means that everybody agrees. If anybody had been against launching, they should have spoken up. Since they didn't, they tacitly agreed to launch. And I don't care what they say today and what they've been saying for the last 20 years, they agreed to launch. The, um probability of failure, you know, was there, but it hadn't failed yet. So it's easy to say, why don't you fail? Why didn't you do this or didn't do that? I think, but I, I guess my feelings were, and I hadn't thought about it, but that, uh, you know, I had said what I had to say to my management 
and that's where it maybe should end. You know, an afterthought, you know, maybe I should have got up and screamed better. No one at NASA is held accountable for the disaster. By the end of 1986, both Larry Malloy and George Hardy retire from the space agency. Robert Lund, vice president of engineering at Morton Thiokol, stays with the company in a new, more senior role. Roger Beaujolais' testimony irreparably damages his relationship with his managers and his co-workers. He leaves Morton Thiokol just a few months after the commission hearings. He never returns. I did nothing wrong. I did everything right along with my colleagues. We paid a horrific price, and, and uh, that's unfair. And I would do it again in a heartbeat. 